All right, so today we're going to get into what's happening in the innovation front for both NFTs, technology, really how maybe crypto is intertwined between all this new tech that's coming out. We'll break it down for you guys today. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. We're going to first start with a letter that came from Congress to Apple and actually went to Tim Cook. I'll jump over to that PDF. A couple things that were in this that I thought were interesting enough to highlight, and this is very for some of you, maybe you're brand new to the show, maybe you're brand new to crypto, maybe you're brand new to understanding how all this technology is going to really interface in the future. This gives you some good highlights on what this go is going to impact. If you look at it, it says we're requesting information and documents from Apple regarding policies in place governing the Apple iOS App Store. So every app you get on the App Store, if you did not know, there's a what we call the Apple tax. Every pro provider, creator, designer, game maker, gets charged a certain percentage, in most cases around 30%. And basically they're asking, uh, we want to see the policies impacting American leadership and emerging technology, including blockchain, non-fungible tokens, and other distributed ledger tech, purposefully limiting the choice and stifling of innovation at the expense of user experience. This is another factor that Apple has played into this to really kind of keep their fiefdom in play. Coinbase accused Apple of forcing it to remove NFT transfers from its wallet app in iOS. You guys probably already saw that if you were a Coinbase user and we saw some of this actually in real time several months back when that occurred. Some other things that are very important here, they have been forced to roll out light versions of their apps. They even know about, these are congressmen by the way, <laughs> that know about what's happening with Axie Infinity, which is pretty significant. I think they're, they're well written in uh, the way they constructed this letter, but Axie Infinity worked with Apple for about two years, ultimately releasing a limited version which excluded the core NFT mechanics and remains unavailable in the U.S. As many of you guys know, our show, we're in like 160 plus countries. Many of you guys are using Axie Infinity on other platforms that are not Apple in its full version. But if you're an Apple user, you have a light version of that. So Axie, uh, of course, recognize the importance of iOS. 70% of Axie community members finding out about Axie from a friend or family member. So it's important for Axie to be easily shared uh, as possible. They further go into, let's, we want you to respond to the following questions, no later than 5 p.m. August 14th. Side loading, big deal. And what's the status of these changes? So remember, Apple was already starting to face a lot of scrutiny from Europe, mostly because of GDP, a lot of the GDPR changes, the privacy changes, but also on the limitations of how innovation was being done. So it finally is getting into our own uh, lawmakers, and if you guys want to know who these people are, I'll show you in a minute. Also, further of uh, what they asked for, does Apple plan to build apps using uh, blockchain or related tech? And then they go on and asked about Solana. One component uh, is a secure vault, which keeps private keys, seed phrases, secure, a secret in the smartphone, a secure element. We've talked about that before. And as Apple explored the secure element, could this be used to enable blockchain innovation and security? Remember, the secure element is designed into most of what you guys know around hardware wallets, especially if you have been watching our show long and you're into crypto, you already understand what that means. But hardware wallets have a certain technology that are in the devices that essentially make it unhackable. And that is something that uh, could be and most likely will be innovated as we see, as we see the mobile devices kind of go forward. So pretty interesting uh, you know, letter to go to uh, Tim Cook here. Finally, within this letter, according to emails uh, provided to the House Committee and Judiciary, you set up an app review fast track uh, for Chinese tech giant Baidu uh, and a company which close ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Why did you do that? So very interesting statements, very interesting questions that are coming in from Congress. It's almost like something has happened in D.C. and people have started to wake up. This is a two congressmen uh, that have come in on this, Gus Bill Arrakis, which is uh, from Florida, and then uh, Jan Shakowski, I think. But anyway, these if you, you might recognize these names. They might be your own house reps or congressmen that are currently in your districts. But remember, that's one of the best ways that you guys can, of course, let your own, uh, your own lawmakers know that you're interested in how innovation and how tech and crypto is all being plugged in to the future here in the United States and how important it is. Uh, just as a reminder, the Solana phone uh, also has, and maybe you guys are first, first here to our channel, Solana actually has a phone called the Saga, and there is a network that is a decentralized network that's tied to that called Helium. Helium, of course, has Helium Mobile, 
We've done a full lineup of videos, both on the Saga and also on Helium. So if you want to learn about those, Helium tied with T-Mobile. This and that technology has already started to move into place, and there's a lot of movement in that area. We're, we're going to be talking about Samsung, though, mostly, because the goal of this video is to showcase how Apple is basically stifling not only innovation, but potentially major leaps forward for technology here in the United States, mainly just to keep and hold creators from being able to do things within the Apple ecosystem. So Saga, of course, and uh, Samsung all doing some pretty amazing things. I want to also highlight right here, Apple may not like it, but Zapple Pay finds a workaround for Bitcoin tipping on Damas. This is on, uh, and the, you guys already know about Damas. Uh, what we will see is uh, decentralized social media. I think we are going to start to see a lot more integration in that. This is where even X.com will probably run into problems because Twitter, the app, which by the way, did everybody see their icon update today on the old Twitter app? It now has the X logo. So that update, update just rolled out on the Twitter app within iOS. But I'm kind of curious how apps like Twitter, formerly Twitter, now X, are going to be able to deal with, especially micropayments, things of that nature, all that is going to get that Apple tax. This, again, it gets into a scenario of what these lawmakers are asking is, why are you stifling innovation? Further into this, you can now buy step in NFTs on iOS, but you have to pay the Apple tax. And this is something that you guys should be aware of. A lot of these companies, game makers, creators, designers, people that are in, a, in the NFT sectors, they're in many cases eating this tax, meaning they're, they're eating that cost that Apple uh, pretty much puts on them and not passing it through to their user, which is great for them, but not great for them to sustain. And that's a problem because if we can't sustain innovation, then obviously technology is not going to move forward. Um, I want to showcase a couple of other things here that are happening. Floor opened uh, NFT buy-ins, uh, buys in-app. Uh, now they're absorbing that fee from Apple and Google. Okay, so a few places that you can look at this. One, of course, is tying in the fidgetal aspect of that. Physical, digital, this is an example, a diamond-packed Apple Watch cuff. Think of this kind of like the Hermes, you know, because Hermes is being sold on the Apple uh, Watch store. It's that basically a high-end leather, you know, watch strap that you're getting that's a Hermes watch strap, but you're paying a lot more for it. But the point is, is that these luxury items will have a connection to the physical and the digital. That's going to be interesting to see how Apple... Uh, faces that because the digital side of this will get that tax. Here's Gucci revealing their rewards for the vault material NFT holders. So again, more of these high-end companies and we're seeing more and more fashion brands, more luxury brands start to move into NFT and at least the digital side of, of things. I don't know if that's a great word, but it's one that everybody's using right now, which is part physical and part digital. Nike and Artifact kind of, I would say, you know, kind of led the pack on that, but we're starting to see a lot of other companies really move into this as well. All right, now what does this all mean for how this goes forward in terms of Apple? Apple comes in in a lot of cases will say, well, we're doing this to protect our users. Here's a story right here from the blog. New malware aims to steal Apple users' crypto via fake blockchain games. Now, this is something that is happening right now. Let me kind of zoom in on this right here. These are Basically within Rust, and everybody knows what Rust is. If you don't, basically it's a software protocol that is used for certain kinds of blockchains. Many of those, you know, Solidity over on Ethereum, Rust uh, right here with Solana in this particular case. The malware attempts to deceive victims through Apple script spoofing and presenting a password reset. Also, it has a chain breaker as an open source project to extract passwords or it's pulling stuff off of you. So if you think that you're completely safe on an Apple phone, you're not necessarily are. And the problem that you're seeing right here is again, because Apple is holding back innovation. And I think that's one of the big problems that we are gonna see uh, moving forward here. Further into this article, Apple's malware, malware blocking service XProtect does not appear to currently prevent execution of this malware. So this is not, they can't really lean on that defense is that they want to protect users. So that is not necessarily going to be the case. Apple's 30% tax, NFT tax, is now deemed illegal uh, by a U.S. court. This was something that happened in California not too long ago. We had a show on that very topic. Most likely we'll see this happen in other courts as we see more uh, issues uh, fought, fought out there within it. I'm going to go to our clip now 
And I'm going to go to, let's see here, let's go to this first clip, because there's a few here. This is uh, to talk about The Flash. Listen in. For the first time ever, The Flash Web3 Movie Experience with hidden collectibles. Uncover exclusive 2D digital cards and 3D models. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And unbelievable AR experiences. Are you in? Let's go. The Flash Web3 Movie Experience, Premium Edition. Also available in Mystery Edition, dropping July 18th. Get yours before they're gone. All right, so the reason we're getting into that area is because as you'll see, there's more and more integration into Web3 use cases. And again, if you're new to this, what I want you to think about is the dawn of the internet. When that happened in the late 1990s, everybody did not really understand what it would mean to the future of technology. That's exactly where we are right now with Web3. And Web3 is driven mostly by tokenized NFTs, most likely gaming, which will be obviously NFTs and blockchain. All of that will now start to tie into content. And as you saw right there with the flash, this is a good example of the Alluvio media wallet where you, if you might have NFTs, but this is a very clunky experience within the Apple ecosystem. And this is a problem again, because Apple is essentially is putting all these barriers in front of creators, designers, engineers, game makers, et cetera, so that they can kind of funnel into the Apple money machine. And that's the thing that everybody is, is so up in arms about, because really, if you think about it, look at it this way. Imagine that there was a, a, you know, a magical 800 pound gorilla in the beginning of the internet that said, we want 30% of everything. And that is exactly what would have held back the internet from becoming what it is today. And many of you guys probably knew or were participated in things like AOL or many of those, you know, wall gardens, all of those went away. And that's what I concern uh, right now with Apple is this is getting a little bit out of control. Uh, this is another fact uh, right here on Android, enabling new blockchain-based experiences on Google Play. We talked about this in the news item. Mainly what this means is Google is starting to warm up to the idea of blockchain, blockchain gaming, NFTs. Could Google and Android be setting up for a potential power play against Apple with a lot more openness? That'll be a question I think uh, that we'll, you know, we'll start to develop out as we see a lot more innovation coming this way. Samsung also is now tied in with Ledger. Of course, we talked about you know, self-custody just a minute ago. We'll see more and more of this, I think, especially around uh, finance. And think about this away from just crypto. Because if, if everything gets tokenized, including the finance systems, you're going to see this in traditional banking. You're going to see this kind of technology opening up when you open your Fidelity app or your regular you know, JP Morgan app, whatever it might be, in the future as we get further into this technology evolving. Another thing right here, Gemini, of course, now tied into uh, Samsung's blockchain um, you know, integration. So again, this will be another scenario where we'll start to see more integrations within the exchanges, simply making it easy for people to onboard, get into cryptos, NFTs, etc. Don't forget that Coinbase also linked uh, the Samsung wallet, and I'll show you that in a second, but the Samsung wallet is all tied into Coinbase right now. And that again, just opens up more. Now, why is Apple not doing this? Why isn't Apple doing these kinds of moves and really opening up their opportunity Either they're accelerating something in disguise or back behind the scenes, or this is truly a bad direction for Apple in terms of maybe the next 10 years. That I think is going to be the question that I think our lawmakers will, of course, start to ask because it's going to get a kind of interesting. Here is a good example also of Samsung's wallet and world of decentralized apps. You'll notice it right there. Uh, and a kiss, and again, this is now uh, doing something that's kind of unique. There, it's to avoid the Apple tax, Samsung's going out and building their own DAP store. DAP, basically, think of it as a Web3 application. For a company that is one of the biggest phone makers in the world to have to go do this, especially around something that is happening in the United States, which the iOS ecosystem is one of the biggest and still I would say leads it by an edge 
I think that Apple may actually see a shift of power. Now, if they go down below the 50 plus percent of marketed dominance right now over Samsung, that may be a uh, that may be a question for Apple for them to finally go. Okay, maybe we're going going down the uh, wrong direction here. I want to go to this next clip, which gets into a little bit more detail on how this could apply into the TV uh, set business as well. So TV support. Let's go to that one. So let's say I was going through and I really like this NFT here. And when you hit that confirm purchase, you'll notice that a passcode does pop up. And that is because, again, this is individually owned artwork and you're the one who wants access to your own artwork, right? And you'll be able to see all of your pieces of artwork that you purchased uh, with NFTs. When you have an NFT that is actually in portrait, the TV and the mount will communicate with each other and auto-rotate to display that NFT exactly how the artist intended. Because of the auto-rotation that you get that partnership between oh the mount and the TV. You can All right, so you can kind of see the future of where this technology is going very easily. And think about, you know, tokenizing everything from art. We just showed you a lot of luxury goods. The gaming sector is exploding. The mobile sector is exploding. All of this is innovation to the next level of Web3, which essentially is the new internet. We're at the birth stage of what's happening there right now. So Samsung adding NFT support to its 2022 uh, TV lineup. We knew all about that. This will be continuing to grow. Uh, and if you look at them partnering with Ledger and Amazon for the European NFT launch, this is only available in Europe right now. So kudos to you guys over there of being able to have that access. Again, here in the United States, I feel like we're starting to get behind the scenes here in terms of not getting everything. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like you don't get to go backstage as, uh, as things start to happen. All right. So one thing here with Samsung is their advancement on their S22 smartphone. This was only available for Koreans, uh, but it integrated in NFTs. And this is something that's been around for a while. I think the strategy is very clear for Samsung and they're showcasing it. And I think this is the key. Can they, be the, can they be the one that actually dethrones Apple from the dominance level of the smartphone business? If maybe Web3 could be the, uh, the tool that they need. I want to go to this next clip because this is Yatsu from Animoca Brands. He's been on our show many times and he explains a little bit about of the innovation level that is happening. Listen in. I'll give you this example for Creo. The introduction of property rights in the physical space and eventually in the digital space has actually led to this economic miracle over the last 30, 40, 50 years in Asia. That it was only 40 or so years ago that South Korea's economy was smaller than that of North Korea. And over a course of period of time, despite the little sort of bumps on the road, um, you know, basically Korea is now the 12th or 13th largest GDP in the world. And if you look at Japan, and if you look at Singapore, and if you look at other Southeast Asian countries, they've all experienced the same. Uh, Korea, of course, also is an example, and this is true for Asia as well, is now one of the largest gaming markets. And it's basically the fourth largest gaming market in the world. So if you don't know this, these are beggars, and they don't beg asking for cash. They ask for basically money to be given to their digital wallet. It's probably the only place in the world where that happens. And what he's talking about is Korea, one of the fastest growth, technologically advanced countries in the world where Samsung is based. And this is, to me, one of the things and why we've seen the Pacific Rim continue to kind of accelerate in this growth. And remember, we've reported on Hong Kong, the movement there with crypto into the regular regulated markets. All of this happening, gaming, of course, highly centralized in Asia right now in terms of blockchain gaming. So this is why I think finally our lawmakers are coming and opening up and saying, hey, listen, we are definitely losing some ground here. Further into this, I want to get into Samsung's uh, launch of their new foldable smartphone. So this is the one that is just coming out. Uh, this is expected to see some pretty good market penetration. It's confident that it's going to be able to sell about 50% more units than last year. Uh, how many of you guys have the flip? Let me know. Just drop some comments down below. We always love to get feedback from you guys on what you're using. Are you using the Apple devices? Are you prepping for the fact that you want to do something with the NFTs or anything, Apple's not going to be able to do it. I mean, literally right now, I have to carry two phones if I want to do something that is outside the Apple ecosystem. Further into this article, Samsung dominates the 75% share in the foldable smartphone phone category, uh, which is going to be cool. I think the problem that that phone has had 
when you look at the flips and those has mostly been that OLED or that flexible screen technology that has been something that has not been able to completely be perfected. If they get that perfected device wise, it's going to be a, a winner. But I think the bigger picture is what they can do with it as we start to see this technology kind of go to the next level. All right, this kind of showcases what they're doing. This is their Sam Mobile blog, how to customize your Galaxy Z Flip 5 with the new Flip Suit case. The reason I want to showcase this for you, let me um, recycle this video real quick and I'll, the, just to show you how brands will be able to work with this in the future. Let me go to full screen on that. Of how brands will be able to work with this. This is showing just Pringles. You'll see it light up the phone here in a second. This being NFC technology that eventually could be authentic, authentication, authentication for NFTs in the future. So you, you can see it right there. Imagine this for something like McDonald's, for something like Starbucks, so a lot of retail brands. Then any kind of retailer out there that starts to sell a physical and a digital NFTs. Think of it like Hugo Boss. You bought a suit, you want a digital, uh, a physical version of it and obviously to wear, but you want to use that suit maybe in a metaverse or in a game and they've got some sort of integration. Those are the kind of things that will start to play into this ecosystem around how this technology is going to go forward. I know a lot of this is really advanced for most people to look at, but this is coming, people, much faster, I think, than everybody understands. If you think about how fast email came and then the era of social, social moved very quickly. It took about a decade for it to see real critical mass. Web3, I put that now at about five years to see critical mass. That's how quickly we're going to see advancement in this area. This is just showing kind of a, a mock-up version of what a, a digital wallet could look like within an ecosystem like Samsung. And this to me is probably going to be even less sexier than what you're seeing right now. This is, to me, one of the things that is going to really make a difference between which, IO or which OS system ends up winning, whether it's the Samsung operating system uh, with Android and what Samsung is doing as a device maker, or if Apple gets out of you know, the past and starts looking toward the future around where this technology is going. Tweet here, this just kind of shows you the, uh, that Flip, five, the Zip, Flip 5's new Flip Suit case, <laughs> which provides uh, device protection, but also you know, these NFC cards that you can change and do some interesting things with, which I think, again, like I said, I think is going to flip to NFTs pretty soon. If you want to get one of these, Amazon's doing a run on it. We don't get paid for this, but I'm just showing you. Uh, and it's not a bad deal. I mean, you're getting a, like $150 Amazon gift card to sign up on this, so not a bad deal. Would you guys jump to Samsung from Apple if you see all of these, all these things happening in Web3? Would that be enough to move you out of the Apple ecosystem? That's a big question. I know that's a question I have to ask myself all the time. I want to go to this last clip here, and this one is talking about uh, Tag Boyar. And Tag is uh, a luxury watchmaker. But they're one of the few that have really taken a big step forward. Listen in. With, with our connected watch, we're going to launch the first and best NFT viewer on a connected watch. First and best. Uh, but after, the, after a few days, it's very easy. I feel personally, me myself being also an NFT collector, yeah. to see in a qualitative way what you, what you own. Yes. Because today you have to open your MetaMask, your yeah. OpenSea. Yeah. Uh, it's not a, a very fluid. And just having it down your wrist, and it's good for you, and it's good to start conversation as well. Yeah, there's still a lot of people who doubt it, but if you look at uh, young generations yeah. who are almost born with uh, with that, it's not a question. All right, so I, I don't want to get into watches too much. I'm going to just mention that if you're into watches, you understand what just happened there. It's it's the collector mindset. If you're into any kind of collecting, and it's it's you know it's kind of flexing, and the aspect that they're going after the younger demographic that will apply to NFT integration into these watches is phenomenal. Tag may actually be stepping out and doing so. I have not been a lover of Tag for a long time, but I've saw and seen some of their innovation here recently. And it's getting to the point now, especially in the tech side, the Calibre uh, E4 was one that I've looked at. Now, I've had one of these watches. I was impressed with the way that it worked. Remember, all of this, remember the Galaxy Watch, also Samsung has one. We've got a lot of innovation going in this direction around the watch. I think this will be another sector that also grows uh, in a big way. And again, all of this tied to, because the Apple Watch is still one of the biggest winners out there for Apple, I think this is going to change things around. 
Let's get into one of my last points here on Star Atlas uh, pitching harvesting cash from mobile gamers. Uh, this is pretty much the um, potential ticket for their flight or fight to survival. And if you're not aware of Star Atlas, guys, let me kind of just give you a framework. This is probably one of the web best Web3 gaming companies out there. Problem is, is will they make it out of this bear market? And because of that, he mentions here, and we've had Star Atlas on the show. We're going to try to get him on the show again. This mobile app to me is an amazing opportunity to grow the user base. From company perspective, it actually gives us an opportunity to generate revenue off of a new asset class, which is obviously beneficial for things like Runway. What he means there is survival cash. And that's what Star Atlas is in the middle of right now. They need to be able to get enough investment because it's been struggle a struggle to get VCs to come back into this space. They're going to have to get it almost like through Kickstarters, so to speak, to be able to, to make it through these next runs. And I think once we get past this next cycle, finally, NFTs, NFT gaming, Web3 gaming will come into the mainstream because of all the integrations that have happened over the past 18 months uh, in these markets. So, all right, so let's go to a quick clip here. All right, from my buddy Stash over there. Um, check out his channel. You might, you guys might like it if you're into NFTs and gaming. But listen into this clip on Michael Wagner. I think we're the biggest game in Web3. Period. Just full stop. Not just on Solana. Um, and we started selling NFTs in April, and it was through that process that we funded development. The fact that we've done 200 million dollars in revenue through time is probably one of the most historically successful business models ever. And of course, we reinvest the avenue, uh, revenue into the AAA title. We've deployed 15 on-chain programs. Our entire economy is built on-chain. And the product that we're about to roll out is 100% on-chain. And we have built the foundation SDK, which is that native Solana integration into Unreal Engine. We've also built a permission architecture and infrastructure that allows for um, great protection of user assets while um, engaging in a gameplay session, but you don't compromise the security of your assets. We've built that. All right, so that's Michael Wagner, CEO of Star Atlas. Uh, as I said, we've had him on the show a couple of times breaking down what their future is, and it's been one that has been a little tumultuous. So I hope that this game sticks around. It is one of the more innovative projects that are out there. And if it does, it will be because of maybe strategy moves of this situation right here. Just as a reminder, Solana Mobile, this is the Saga phone, which was really the first true Web3 phone out there. We're going to see a lot more of these people. I think the, this is just the beginning of an innovation that we're going to see in the devices industry. Samsung most likely leading the way. The question will be is where Apple stands. And I think that's the biggest issue right now on innovation because innovation is not going to stop. Web3 is here. It's going to be here for a long time. And I think the innovation around brands, integrations of tokenizing everything on the planet and where crypto and blockchain are going, the future is now starting to invade the mobile markets. All right. If you guys are not part of the Diamond Circle, make sure you jump in. It's our own private member group. It's a place where you get additional content. We do a podcast over there and a lot of additional content and research right here from the show that you don't get here on the YouTube channel or in our regular podcast streams. So make sure and uh, just click the link down below. You can join right there. And of course, if you want to reach me, it's out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.